gentlemen, it's been a bad year. <laughs> so already my complaint to Royce, the producer, is... Wait a minute, you have a complaint? I could not wait to sit around the microphones like we're on the radio. Right. Yeah. And there's no microphone. There's no microphone. Well, we have the lobs. Okay. You know. so. Have you I don't got, know. Have you got I, four the hours? last time we worked together was the last time you were on the show, obviously, right? We never yes. did any live shows after that. No, it was think? like 24 years ago or something, maybe. You, don't it, make people do math. Give us a year. I, I don't even remember. It, I, it, it has was to 1992, 95. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so I was there for seven years with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because and then and then you left for us, which, which I know was because of the fucking. E. No. I thought it was the E show. No, it wasn't that. Oh no, what was it? No, no. Oh, Say it. Okay, I'm sick wait. Of you. Tell, <laughs> just bracket it, and I'll I'll tell you what the truth of everything is, if oh. you want to know. Does anybody care? Does anyone want to know what that is? No. Why I, I left? Yeah. Who is it? What's his name again? No, I had heard, I had thought it was because the unions didn't want you to do, to do the E show based on the band because but, I don't know what they offered you. They offered me ten thousand for the year to, to do the E show. <laughs> the whole thing was such a a wonderful sh sham. <laughs> My favorite story about the E Show is I worked as a comedian forever, and I had a lot of have a lot of comedian friends, and I got very lucky to get on the Howard Stern Show. Obviously, yep. uh, and we're all making a lot of money, and I'm really happy. And I have a show at the Riviera, and I'm there with like Max Alexander and Don McHenry and Dennis Blair, a bunch of these guys. <clears throat> we're talking and saying, "Oh, Martin, you got so lucky." And he said, "And now you're on TV. You got the E Show." And I said, "Yeah, but you know." like 25 grand, you know? And I looked up and all of them were like spellbound. They're like, they said, you can't be doing so well that an extra $25,000 a week doesn't help you. And I said, a week? That's for a fucking year, you know? And they all fell right down. I know, 10,000 for if me. I had a shovel, if you had a shovel and stood on the corner in Los Angeles and they picked you, picked you up to go pick lettuce that day, you made more than $25,000 a year. Well, the one thing I'll tell you, Billy, is yes. that is that when you, because, but you know, Jackie, he's gonna say it. Yeah, I know, I know. Jackie, me and <laughs> Jackie, me and Baba Boy, <laughs> Jackie, me and Gary, Jackie, Gary, and I. <laughs> when we edit this, it's gonna be four minutes. <laughs> Jackie, Gary, and I were all in the uh, in the jock lounge, uh, and and just commiserating about because I I guess you were making twenty five, Gary was making fifteen a year, and I was making ten. And you were just kidding. You said, "Hey, let's all walk." <laughs> no, you always get this wrong. When they first made us the offer, we were walking down the street, and we were each offered ten. We were each offered ten. Oh, okay. It was the initial thing, and and I said, ten grand. I mean. Come on, isn't that a little crazy? But that's as far as, the, as it went. Yeah. No, and it was nothing. All of a sudden, I mean, but that's, it wasn't like, hey, why don't we all quit or why don't we all band together? It was just like, wow, that, that, that's a lousy amount of money. Well, I remember we also had a discussion in Jock Lounge. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> but the point is, then I, you know, they, I, and you know this story, Billy, they came up to me and all my lawyers said, you know, Larry Shio, who was our attorney, all he said was, if they want you to sign a contract, then um, just ask them if they could fax a copy to me so I could look at it. That's it. Mm -hmm. I, I, you just I, wanted to read it. Yeah, I didn't say that I wasn't going to sign it. So, uh, so then when <laughs> Richard Bosch comes into the jock lounge. Don't even tell me that's not entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> when Richard Bosch comes into the room, he goes, you know, he goes, <laughs> you know, okay, here's the contract. I said, look, I'm going to sign it but could you just fax to my attorney? He puts it back into the envelope, he goes, sure. Never does he fax it, and I'm off the e-show. Anytime I'm in the studio, e-cameras are off, I'm not on the show anymore. That goes on for three weeks, and I go, and I finally, tail between my legs, I go to Howard's office, go, Howard, I'm sorry that I asked to have the contract faxed to my attorney, and Howard said, yeah, John, you gotta stop listening to Jackie. You know, he's always trying to, you know, he's a troublemaker. Because Baba Booey told Howard that you were the one trying to get everybody in get And I felt so bad for you. That's so funny. <laughs> I, to I told him that I didn't, uh, oh, I, I love my story about this because um, Buckwalt handled everybody and, and they kind of ruled over you guys. And Fran Shea, who was in charge of each house, said, I'll take care of Jack. I'll handle Jackie. <clears throat> and the offer was 10 grand and I, Said, all right, we can, let's go have lunch at the Friars Club. I'm grandiose by our lunch. 
and we're having lunch, and after lunch she says, okay, where would you like to be in five years? She actually said that to me. Yeah. You know, because like the E-Channel is gonna tee you up for, for president. <laughs> and she said, where would you like to be in five years? And I swear to God, this is what I said. I said, I think in five years I would like to be the head writer of the, one of the greatest radio shows of all time. Wait a minute, I already am. And she was like, hum and a hum and a hum. <laughs> I said, I want at least double, come on, you know, it, it's crazy. It's, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. And then she, they didn't say yes to that. And I don't know if you remember, I sat, <laughs> I sat in the dark. Yeah. I sat in the dark for. A, they a, built a wall around you. Like a, not, not a wall, but a couple of months. I actually sat there with no light on me, and I just was not part of the show. They didn't show me on the E show unless it was like like that, you know. But then, but then, how did you resolve it with them? Eventually, eventually, they came up with twenty five thousand know, <laughs> dollars, which which was not a crazy amount of money, but it certainly was better than ten, you know. Yeah, well, that's what I. I well, the the E show. Well, you know what? First of all. My involvement with the Stern Show to begin with, I came out of Boston. I was working in radio there, and Mel Carmazan was our boss also. Yeah, he was the owner in, of Infinity. In, uh, Infinity. And uh, I told him, listen, I want to, I, I had newly sobered up, you know, I was like a drunk for a bunch of years, and, uh, and I decided I don't want to stay in Boston. There was like, I wanted to go to New York because supposedly that was like Oz to me. You know, where all the commercials, the big time stuff was going on. This is very interesting because I always wondered if they used it like a carrot and said, if you clean up, we'll send you to the Stern Show or whether you cleaned up and then said, get me out of here. No, I, I had to get cleaned up. I was a mess. I was wrecking cars and, and these were the real old days, you know, how like nobody had computers. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You could you could fuck Thank up you. in one district or one city if you and move flip to a the car next and they'll, they'll <laughs> lock you up and let you go. And then you could do it in Framingham, the same exact thing. And nobody could put it together. And I don't I know, I never saw him before. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> so, so one night I uh, I was coming home from a gig. I was playing in a band and uh, I had so much coke and so much beer and the beer won out and I started to fall asleep doing about I don't know a hundred something miles an hour and you know when you're fooling around like that you realize when you're driving you go if I move that steering wheel just like that I'd be dead it would go oh, everything yeah. would be over problem solved problem solved so what did I do <laughs> I, f I fell asleep and what woke me up was the sound of the guard yeah, rail yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so anyway I flipped the car and what woke me up was the whole thing coming to life, like I'm behind the wheel, but I'm upside down, and I had to get my guitar. All I could think about is my damn guitar, I gotta get it. You know, I didn't worry, I didn't look to see if my legs were broken or anything. Uh. So I go in the back and I pull it out, and then a steady comes over and he helps me out of there. Come on, get out of there. And I was like weaving and dizzy, and, and he goes, you know, I just want to tell you that uh, I've been doing this night shift in, in Weston, Massachusetts. Right in front of the barracks, I dumped my problems. You know, how weird. It's Jesus. Like, I, it's over. I want to get caught. So uh, he just said, when I come by and I see somebody like in your situation, we bring plastic bags and shovels to scoop that, that red jello that's left of you, you know, oh. out of the front seat. And I said, yeah. You know, I was like, like, lucky me, huh? And that made him so fucking crazy. Pissed him off. So he goes, come on, let's go. And, and it was literally... He's trying, he's trying to pull a scared straight thing, you know? Yeah, but how can you do that with a cement head that doesn't know shit from Shinola, you know? Yeah. And, and it's like I was loaded anyway. But that was your, that was your light bulb moment? No, you think it would be. <laughs> when you did it the next night? <laughs> yeah. No, no, but I, I, I just said, I got this, I had magical thinking about myself. I was like, you know, if I was meant to die, I would have died. I guess I'm better than that. You know, that's how drunks and, and druggies think. It's like, hey, you know, I must be super powered or something. Yeah. So anyway, but I did clean up, and when I did, um, I wanted to move to New York and just work in production. But, um, but Mel said, I... I told Stern about you, you know, and I said, oh, really? And uh, he said, yeah, they, they're, you know, they want to talk to you eventually, you know, but I'll set you up down there. And I went into work in production. At um, first, you just came in one day a week, right? No, I came in and worked in production every day. Remember Pat no, but was we, the program I would, director? We, I'm talking about as far as the guys on the show were concerned. I, oh. I had no idea, you know. No. Um, no, I would come in uh, after you guys were off the air. I'd go in Howard's office, and, and he said, so how's New York doing? And I go, 
I'm just trying to get acclimated. And he, and he was very generous of spirit to say to me, hey, if you need you know, help getting acclimated, I'll help you out. You know, I just know everybody, and don't worry. And, um, and I still wasn't part of the show. He hadn't even asked me to come in yet, but I used to sit there and just say shit. Just that he'd be having his baked potato, and a couple of times, I, Lucille Ball was dying, and and uh, we were watching the news every night. They were saying, "Well, Lucille Ball is in Cedars Sinai," you know, and they are showing the the grape stomping clips and the the, the conveyor belt bonbons, you know. Right, right. Yeah, and uh, she's in the bed in the heat. Yeah, and she's lying in Cedars Sinai. So uh, I went in, and Howard's having his potato. <laughs> hey, man, how you doing? You know, hey, good. You know, hey, I think Lucy's about to take a p the big powder, you know, out. And he goes, oh, yeah? And I said, yeah, they're showing the conveyor belt bonbon scenes and all that. And, and I started saying, you know, she's, in, she's probably in Cedar Sinai going, oh, more propofol. <laughs> oh, Ricky. No, there's no Ricky, Miss Ball. <laughs> Oh, Apple, no, she's gone too, Miss Ball. Ah! <laughs> you know, it's no estrogen. So I said, that's awful. You know, I'm laughing about this, but. So it's a horrible taste, so and he's he, totally entertaining. And he said, tomorrow morning, Gary's going to call you, and just, just do that. And so uh, I think they called me, and it caught me with my pants down. You know, I didn't quite get the rhythms of the show. It yeah. takes a while to learn a particular but rhythm. But on the phone, that's, that's, was, that's, a, that's always tough. It's that's on the phone. Tough. And uh, so Gary goes, ho, ho, I was going to call you in a minute. I'm going to put the wall No, you put the wall up. You know what I mean? He told you he was going to call me. Oh, this is great. And I said, yeah, OK, all right. And I figured, yeah, this will be a piece of cake. And then it was just like going nowhere fast. You know, it was like. It just was like, uh, I would say something like, uh, you know, oh, Miss Ball, you want to speak to Miss Ball? She's in, um, she, we'll keep her in a suite, you know, and there's nobody next to her, so, um, and, and Howard's probably going, get to the joke, for Christ's <laughs> sake. You know, because I have a tendency to set shit up. Right, and, every, and, and everybody else is following the emperor. They're watching him to yeah. see if it's all right to, you know. So m the minute I finally started, it was like, <laughs> okay, thank you. You know, <laughs> and then I said, all right, fuck this guy. And uh, they called me back again, and Gilbert had come in. He was there screaming about Lucille Ball. You know, we can call Lucy. And uh, they try again. And I'm like, hello? Is this Lucille Ball? Yes. This is the Howard Stern Show, Lucille Ball. Why are you people bothering me? <laughs> Here I've got one foot in the grave and one on a banana peel, and you people are bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> so by now, Gilbert is screaming. Screaming. She sounds like she's in good spirits. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, uh, and it went on from there. And uh, just, I was just rolling with it. Uh, and I, you know, just try to imagine being this woman lying in bed, the queen of comedy. And then they got some jokes in. Gilbert, did anybody ever call you Miss Testicle? <laughs> you know. And uh, I was like, oh, oh, here's another card. What's it say? It's from Tom Bosley. Oh, yeah? What does it say? Oh, these are the things that really keep a wonderful man, Tom Bosley. Yes, and a wonderful man he was. You know, and we're just sitting there shooting the shit with the lady that's dying. And I said, boy, this is really dark. Yeah. And uh, hey, so. Is that, but great fun. But great, great fun. fun. So. But you were there, right, Jack? I'm, I'm sure. I don't remember specifically, room. but I'm sure I was there. You, you were know. in the room, but here I was sitting in my house, you know, like feeling like a frump. And the people next door in the apartment, they could always hear me screaming and yelling <laughs> if it was a character that I was supposed to do. Uh. But I was lucky, you know, when I came in there. Um, when, when you came in, it. it it was, as far as I remember, it was seamless because <clears throat> right away, right away, I think Fred was a little freaked out because he's the Boy Scout. Right. Yeah. I mean, he always did the. It was so funny because when I started on the show, he would he'd do the voices, mm. but when he got a voice down to where it was really great, Howard would just take the voice and it become <laughs> inappropriate. And then he'd do it, you know. He'd, so one by one, he would take all the, you know. And I realized Fred. they were all Fred's voices. But then all of a sudden, Billy's here. And you're doing this after this, and I. There was a couple times Fred actually wrote me notes and said that said, "What am I doing here?" 
You know, like it. Oh, what, really? What, 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 I never told that anybody to anybody in my life. But what am I supposed to say? You know, you're talented. He's talented. We're having a. This is free for all. Well, yeah. Plus, plus, they did different impressions. No, it, it made, Trust me. Trust me. What? It, it didn't make any sense. <laughs> it's just his insecurity, right? I was I was talking to somebody about uh, Kurt Voltheim. Yeah. Because uh, the whole Nazi thing with Trump, blah 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 blah, and. Uh, and I was, I was, we were talking about the, the open source concert that we did at Nassau Coliseum, and we decided Fred's going to do Kurt Voltheim at the Coliseum, and it was impossible to get him a Nazi uniform. You can't get a Nazi uniform. Now you can. Go really figure. Not, they're, not, they're in every storefront. But you couldn't get it. You can and, get one with a fill up. Right, right, right. Up the street. <laughs> it's, uh, but it was so crazy, and Fred would do Kurt Voltheim, and it was so so hysterical every time but oh, yeah. some but howard would say maybe we'll do kurt full time tomorrow and fred would come in with a stack of papers like this prepared always waiting 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 that's what made me think of this because he'd write me a note do you think he's going to get the full time yeah, do you think yeah. he's gonna i'm like how the fuck i don't you know yeah, yeah. is he going to do volta and and he'd sit there for a week with these papers and finally he'd leave the papers home and howard go all right, we're going to do it. It's explode. And then we completely stopped doing it. And and this is me talking out of school. And I've always said the same shit. He stopped doing Kurt Voltheim because it was too funny. Imagine you're Howard, and you do four or five hours a day of radio, yep. 25 hours a week. You're destroying. You're the best radio guy ever. And then you go out on a Friday night, and some guy comes up to you and says, you got the greatest radio show. You know what I love? I love that Kurt Vall time. Yeah. You oh, know, yeah, well, probably, well, yeah. You know, okay. Bye-bye. And I, 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 I could be totally inventing that, but I don't care. I just knew that, you know, <laughs> this was his show. He created this thing out of nothing, and I always respect stuff. Anybody yeah, who can come along uh, and create uh, their uh, own thing. Of course, thing. of course. And, and I was just lucky. He get, The guy gave me a job, so it's hard for me to say, oh, you know, I wasn't making enough money and I wanted a raise and they wouldn't give me a raise. You'll never see me bitching or carping about that because if I stay in the part of the pool where people pee, shame on me, you know? Yeah. It's like, I I'll leave. I mean, I'm not going to be like the guy that's always like bitching. And uh, and plus they had plans. <laughs> but when I was there, Billy, what? you hadn't started coming in on a regular basis. I started in 88. Yeah. And I used to hang out with you in in the production studio. Yes. Because I remember we would hang out and talk and bullshit yeah, yeah, yeah. and then like and talk about. You used to wear the this top annoying lane. top hat. <laughs> the really? Yeah. What were you doing? Oh, the, the derby, the slash thing. Yeah. <laughs> and he had really long hair. He had phases. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> but 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 we would have a good time. But then you started coming in doing uh, <laughs> David Dinkins. Oh, the mayor of that New was York. Guglielmo. <laughs> yeah. It was. Every I, part of me is New York. My arm is the Southeast Expressway. You know, what, whatever. I was, I was always worried for you that you were too funny. You know, it's like because it's always, it's always mirror, mirror on the wall. You know. But he was like, always like, you know. Yeah, right. I know. I know. And then he'd say, "All right, that's enough, uh, Mrs. Shot." You know, and I would take it seriously. I'd say, he wants me to cut it out, and then he'd go. Right, right, uh, right, right. What are you right. doing? Don't sit down when I tell you to sit down. All right, but no, wait, but getting back to yeah. I thought what happened, and this is what, because I remember we were at, at one of your parties in Babel, and you had told me that that you, that, you know, the E show was against all of the unions. It was against AFTER, it was against SAG, it was against every union you were in. Well, they were not going to do it, uh, do it union style, and the thing was, is uh, that would have been okay, but. They wanted to pay less in scale. Less in scale. So when Howard called me up and said, you know, um, they want to pay you less in scale, I said, Jesus, Howard, you know, I'd love to, love to be able to do it, but, but I'm in three unions. I was in the electrical, uh, what is it, the IBEW, the International I, I, I Brotherhood of Electrical right. Workers. <laughs> I was yeah. in SAG, I was in AFTRA, and I was also uh, in the musicians union for a while. Yeah. You know, but, but I said, I can't do it. It's like they'll, they'll flag me. And he just was like, he wanted this to happen so bad. He just said, why wouldn't you do it till someone said anything? And I just said, I wish you all the luck. Honest to God, I hope, I hope it works you out, know, Howard. I really do. You, and then I just on. hung up and I said, but, you know, you're not, you're not in Podunk, Iowa, and why don't we just do it till you, 
until you get caught. It's like this is a top <laughs> no, radio really show anywhere I know. on television. You know, I know, right? I know but I know. that's the thing you told me. When you hung up, you're like, I can't believe this millionaire is fucking asking me to break my fucking... <laughs> I've, I've had a lot of millionaires ask me for favors. Oh, please. And it's calling. <laughs> the the line around the block. Because I remember you telling me, sorry, in fact, I remember that when you said, he actually, like, when you picked the phone, he said, hey, hot shot or something oh, like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he said, hey, hot shot. Like, he was like, that's the whole thing. It was, I, I equate the whole time being there to being on the firm. You know, you know, you do what you're told to do, and if you have any problem, which is why Howard had a problem with you, because you would fight for things, and it would irritate the shit out of him because you're going against the grain, and that's the whole thing. And I remember you always used to tell me that you think that it, that it was Fred that set up this whole... No, no, Fred... He Fred set up the president. Fred didn't do anything wrong. No. But that's the problem. Yeah. Fred never did anything wrong. In 40 years, he never said the words, can I have more? Yeah. You know, he's, yes, please, man. You know, it's like getting, getting spanked in a fraternity. Yeah, yes, sir, can I, may I please have another one? You know, like he just took it and took it. So here's a guy's taking every breadcrumb that's come his way for 30 years or 10, 20, whatever it was. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, I'm like, can't we have more than that? And like, you know, what happened to the template of, you know, you, nobody asked for that and they just, you know. Yeah, they, yeah. You know, I, I told uh, Frank Flores, I don't care, the sales manager, he read my book and he said that was very interesting because uh, this is kind of going a long way. When you're a kid, you have a yard and you play baseball. Yeah. And sometimes you have a neighbor that's a, a scumbag. And, and if you hit the ball into their yard, they get all pissed off, or <clears throat> they chase you, or whatever. But all of a sudden, I got a new friend, Billy West, comes over to play baseball, and we hit the ball in the yard by accident. like, Billy, go yeah. get the ball, because yeah, he yeah. doesn't know any better, all right? Yeah, and, the, yeah. and the guy comes out with a rake and chases him. Like, it's the funniest thing in the world. So we start doing Butt Bongo Fiesta, and John Lolas, who had been our E producer. Yeah, on Channel 9. The Channel 9 producer decides to come and, and produce this show. And... So we're going to do the show, and as innocently as could, could be, even though I knew it, there's no way it was innocent, I said, oh, John, what am I getting paid for this? And he said, oh, I'll find out and tell you tomorrow. Yeah. And we never were told what we're getting paid for anything. It was like you do what you do, and what you get, you get, and no, no questions asked. No and that's, questions asked. That's how it went. The next day, this is the, the reason this is a great story is because I... You know the old expression, you got called on the carpet? I literally got called on the carpet. The next day he said, Mel wants to see you, and I went to see Mel Carmerson, and he walked out of his office, and across from his office was a blank office with, with no fur, no nothing. The only thing in it was carpet. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked in there, and I just remember smiling to myself, like, this is too funny. And he goes, uh, are you happy here? I'm like, yeah, that's how we yeah. talk. No, that's how we talk. Yeah, that's yeah. Bit. <laughs> Have we always been fair with you? And what am I going to say? No, you cheap <laughs> fuck. You know. <laughs> Have we always been fair with you? Yes. He says, why don't you do the show? And we'll decide what you're going to get. And I said, okay. And I walked out. I knew I had thrown Lola's to the wolves because he had said, Jackie wants to know what he's getting paid. Yeah. And like, but instead of it coming back, he literally said to my face, like, you have just, no right to know what you're going to earn for the extra work you're doing. It's like, hey, what do you do about that? You know, it's like, and that you was just laugh that while was, they're stealing your right. shoes. You know how it goes. That was the regime. That was the. <laughs> well, well, it's so funny you say that because I was repped by Don Buckwell for, and you know how this story is. But I, I was repped by Don Buckwell for a little while. Don, who I think is the biggest bully. I mean, that whole thing is Mel Don Howard was the Troika of bullies. But when did you get so brave? It's a regime. What? When did you get so brave? It's I think been 20 that... years. He didn't do any of this shit. Yeah, but some things are still whirling around. In... Oh, I don't give a shit about any of them. No. Right now. Good, good. Keep going. I'm trying to wind him up. <laughs> I'm no, to wind him up. No, but <laughs> do you know that when the, the, the first salary I got for the Channel Nine show? Now you know I was doing all the interviews. It was it was like a phenomenon. Yeah, it was. It like, was. You know, and. I was making seven fifty, seven hundred and fifty dollars a show, and yet the um, the brochure that went out to all the, like all the advertisers had Howard, Robin, and me on the cover, and I was making seven hundred and fifty dollars. I know it was wonderful. <laughs> it was like fucking, you know, and I'm not look, just like you said, hey. I could have left if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm just gonna take the shit <laughs> and money and right. that's it. And don't and and how and if you ever I remember if I ever questioned Don Buckwell done anything, 
who is the biggest scumbag in this business, and I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I can't stand the motherfucker because he was, would scream at me like I, you know, I have told you this. Don Buckwold, fucking like if I said to him like like he wanted me to do a t-shirt deal, I said, but Don, you know, Howard and Robin wouldn't do t-shirts. It's kind of tacky, you no? Know? And he goes, oh, now you don't want to do it. That's it. You know what? I'm gonna call Howard, and he would turn like this and and go to pick up the phone to call Howard. Now I'm a kid. I'm 21 years old. I'm like, no, 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 no. Don, please don't call Howard. Please don't call Howard. Like a little yeah, fucking yeah, kid. Yeah. Like a little kid, because because I was so afraid that he'd call Howard. He's, and Howard he's did... calling the principal. Yes. I, yes. You and know, that's the kind of that the, the, even with the eat thing, like I had to go to Howard and apologize to him just because they asked to have the contract faxed to him. There's a joke. To my attorney. There's a joke that I can't wait to plug him into because it's the oldest, greatest joke. Yeah. Where a guy calls the law office and says, "Can I speak to Mrs. Schwartz?" I'm sorry, Mrs. Schwartz passed away. Oh. And then a few minutes later, the phone rings. Can I speak to Mrs. Schwartz? I I'm sorry, Mrs. Schwartz is dead. A couple of minutes later, he called, can I speak to Mr. Schwartz? No, he, he passed away. Aren't you the same person that just called here a couple times? And the guy says, yeah, but I just love hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> when Buckwell dies, I'm going to call that fucking office. <laughs> That's how I felt. Like, because, Billy, I told you, I, I don't know, I think I might have told you this, but, he, he, you know, because Don told me, because he, he Listen, said... Listen, I can hear him suing us. No, I don't know. <laughs> fuck him. I, I swear to God, the guy was a fucking tyrant. Wait a minute, you told me that you got yelled at so yeah, bad yeah, once. Yeah, no, no, here. All I could picture was this. <laughs> you guys remember a print ad from, like, a couple, <laughs> few no, decades it's ago? It's the Memorex. Max L. No, Max L. Oh, yeah. With, with a hippie sitting in the chair, and he's got sunglasses on. His hair is blowing backwards, and there's a speaker in front <laughs> yeah. of him. You know, like, a testimonial to how, how faithful that tape is. And, and it was like... Whoa! Yeah, that's how it was. Cause, because then there was one time, Jack. I like you, because when, when you know when you know Stuttering John came to. I it, just did weather, and you just. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> but Stuttering John was coming. You know where it was big. Stuttering the, Trump's weather. I know, but it was that you know in the heyday of Stuttering John, and I and I thank you and you know and Fred for writing all those questions and everything. But when it was in like like you know you know when it was in the heyday, and and I thank you my book too, to, you know for that. But anyway. Book plug. <laughs> in my head, you know, so everything was going good. And and, and 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 I called Don once. I said, hey, you think maybe I can get on Joan Rivers? She had an 11 o'clock show. Or David Letterman, he had a 1230. And, and Don just said to me, what are you going to do? I go, I don't know, I'll tell a few jokes, tell some funny stories. He goes, oh, that's it, John. You know, I have to call Howard. You know, I'm repping him as a favor. You know, I'm repping you as a favor to Howard. I, you know, seriously, this is getting ridiculous. Because I asked him to get me on his show. And I was like, no, again, but no, 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 please. So anyway, so he always said he, that he wanted nothing to do with my band. He doesn't give a fuck about my band gigs. So, so now I'm like, I'm going to prove this motherfucker that I'm worthy of something. I get, the, I get the Atlantic deal, you know, and then I'm about to sign the Atlantic deal. And I go, you know what, shit, I wonder if Don's going to get mad. Because, but, but he said he wanted nothing to do with the band. So... You know, I'm supposed to go to the album. I mean, I'm supposed to go to the uh, to Atlantic to sign the record in front of uh, who, 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 who was the head of Atlantic? What the hell? Ahmed Ardigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah easy, easy for you to say. <laughs> I was just trying to figure out how long that <laughs> might take. Another book plug. Yeah, yeah. No, no, so so I'm all set to go. I go. You know, let me just call Don. He goes. Don goes. Get to my office now. Get to my office now. And this was where that fucking that Maxell thing happened. He got out, what a, what a, at, out from behind his desk and circled me, screaming. Was at it the like top work, Howard of, Beale? At the top of his lungs, circling me. How the fuck are you fucking? And just screaming and screaming. Al Capone, he hit him with a baseball bat on his yeah, head. Teamwork. Sorry, I might have spit in your water. You I, might want to get a new glass. No, but, no, I just, I, I need your essence <laughs> No, you know Nobody's what? Scared. You know what? He's I was screaming just, at I me. I was just going to say, I never, I never went, I, that drama shit never scared me. There's no adult men on this planet that ever scared me, except yeah. one, my dad. Yeah. And my dad used to beat the living shit out of me every day of my life since I was a little kid. He, uh, he hated the, the fact that I was born. I was in Detroit a couple of weekends ago, and I'm looking at where I, I almost drowned, in the Detroit River. That's where my dad taught me how to swim, but he just threw me out of the boat, the rowboat. Holy shit. Yeah, and it was a filthy river and no life jacket, but it was like... So none of these guys ever could scare me. It's like when they brought John Chris You, you already here. went through the fire. I went, in the first 10 years of my life, I, 
I had like so much crap happen to me, hospitalized as a kid. Oh, you know, he falls off things and it's like I had to stifle. So when these full grown men are treating me like I'm seven, you know, yeah. I just do say yeah. have a quiet laugh and just say, I, I'm not but buying see that, into any of this. But Billy, that's, and I'm sorry about your child. I, you know, my father oh, had me too. Oh, there's worse, there's worse. But we'll, 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 we'll talk we'll, about no, that. No, maybe we won't. His child, <laughs> hey, look, fuck these guys. It wouldn't are, be funny if that didn't happen. These so guys should say, God bless my father. Oh, fuck you, that's the, that's the wrong mentality. Bullshit, guys. Bullshit. <laughs> these, you're not the only two guys that can write a book. You know, I might have one. <laughs> Should anybody care to ask me? <laughs> nobody <laughs> asked him and nobody asked me. Just got to sit down and fucking do it. What do you uh, nothing. <laughs>